about the history of Norco because it is a long and diverse history. I said, we're doing it. And so, yes, mm. we and Bruce have agreed to do this for us here for the next week. And we're going to study a lot about Norco, but also a lot of really fun stories about some big personalities. <laughs> Not giving anything away. <laughs> Let's give the Turnbulls a very warm welcome. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Turnbull, the youngest of the Turnbull boys in town. My father is Bruce Turnbull, the historian of town. He is 98 years old and Whoa. lived the history here. You'll find I'm kind of the play-by-play -play guy, and he's the color commentary. I really have that tonight. But just to give you a quick background, Bruce Turnbull grew up in Northville, and the latest History of Northville book that's where he was born, in that store. He'll tell you a little bit of story about when they moved down when Dillinger came through town and they bought another shop, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Um, my father was born in 1919, right in this town, went to Norfolk High School, class president of 37, captain of the football team, the basketball team, you know, all the teams, played basketball in college, and eventually he's part of the great generation that went to World War II also. He's been involved civically with an awful lot of things you see around Norfolk, where the schools are, Allen Terrace, has been on most of the committees in town through the decades. I grew up with all the stories from my grandfather, and of course my father. I've been the slide guy for about 30 years, so I have learned uh, some of the stories through that. We just thought it would be interesting. My father used to teach the history of Northville over five weeks at the Norfolk Recreation, and it was talked about this being the 150th year of Northville, to talk a little bit more about the history. He does various presentations. We'll try to keep it to one hour. What? It's five sessions one hour piece. You'll see a lot of information at the end. If you have any questions, uh, Wendy will give you cards. Every question you have, we'll answer, whether it's an email or we'll call you. So don't feel if we don't get to questions at the end, we will answer each and every question. We always do. My father through the color commentary, and if I don't know the answer, we will find the answers for you. So use that uh, for your information. Um, with that, just to let you know a little bit, let's see where we are. He has been the recipient of an awful lot of awards in town. I could bring him, he has a couple rooms full of all the awards. We just brought one or two, the man of the year and other things. So this is not about Bruce Turnbull, but he is one of the last of the Mohicans. You know, he has lived the history. I think it's more important listening to the stories about what it was than what somebody wrote that learned in a book. So feel free to ask all the questions at the end. The goals of the course are really to enthuse you on what North was all about. I've been around town 57 years. My father's been around town 98 years. So it's our quest that you get more involved at what North was all about. Wendy, who spoke earlier, she has a whole room downstairs of all Northville history. There's books that you can check out. We can't hardly cover the topics tonight, which we're looking at, but if you have questions, see Wendy and write them down at the end. We'll answer those. We started off as five one-hour sessions. A lot of people signed up for all of them. There's some people that signed up individually. We will try to get to as much information tonight, but knowing we're trying to keep with one hour. So this will be the longest intro that we'll do with the five. So with that, let's see. What will we talk about first? Um, for the course in general, my father, so you know, just the background, he grew up on 222 Fairbrook Street, which is down by the racetrack, which is the seven mile area. His father was the electrician in town. My grandfather, that's what that little store was, and that where Baby Baby is today, that was a North Electric shop when I was a kid. And that's, he'll tell you a little story about that. So all the homes in this area, between Northville, and my grandfather had another store up in Williamson, 
They wired all the homes initially for electricity, that new wild thing about 1900. So my dad grew up in that whole history of when all the homes are wired. If you have knob and tube, tube wiring in any of those old houses, the North Electric Shop did that. So no, also, and we'll talk in another session in the future about the religions in Northville. His father was a good Baptist in town. His wife, my grandmother, was a good Methodist in town. And he married a good Catholic in town. So my father has about all the religions handled there. The original OLV services used to be in my mother's house on Dunlap and High Street before they built the Clapford Church. Fifty families did that where OLV is today, and they uncovered some of that in the excavation most recently. My parents were one of a hundred families that built OLV as you see it there. So you can see there's a lot of stuff, a lot of history. We won't get through it all, but just to give you an idea, 98 years of living it, and again, I'm the play-by-play. -play. He's a color commentary. Wow. So this is the house that I mentioned. My mother, Here's me, Brian. go right ahead. <laughs> Did you want me to tell her we brought the pond? Almost. We're almost there. From the house there and show Almost. Me. We're almost to that store. <laughs> almost. So this is the house that I referred to that my mother grew up in. That's exactly how it looks today. That's exactly how it looked when I was a kid in the 60s. The barber shop later on used to be in that half after my grandfather had a stroke, and then they put on an, an addition for some other things in the back. It's exactly the way it was 50 or 60 years. I'm kind of the last of the way North of it was in the 60s, and it's developed quite a bit. We had something too, I you wish know. you would. <laughs> Super. Our Lady of Victory Church was built, can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Our Lady of Victory Church was built in Northville in 1922. Prior to that, they had mass in this house here. Oh, wow. It was Mr. Heaton's house. And there were just a few Catholics in Plymouth and a few Catholic families in Northville. So uh, uh, in, the, in the living room, that's where they had, had the, the mass right there. Uh, the Catholic priest would come into North Hill once a month. And I don't know if he'd come by, by Model G car or if he'd come by horse and buggy, but he'd start up in Milford, the St. Mary's in Milford, and then he'd come to North Hill, and, and then he, he would go to Wayne, St. Mary's in Wayne. But uh, that's, that's where they had the first mass. And we'll get back to that house a little later on, but I don't know. Anything else? On? No, you're going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. So no, okay. This is about the most you're here from me tonight. <laughs> the stories are the most important thing. The, the person that grew up in this house was my mother. She graduated in the class of 36 as a Val Victorian, and he was much younger, so he was the class of 37. <laughs> 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 to give you an idea. So what we want to uh, cover tonight in the next hour, we kind of talked about the Turnbull story already. We are done with that. Early Northville, my father, his first stories will tell you about how it was named and the, the topography of the area. Early settlers, the naming of Northville, the early years, and the surrounding area of Northville. I think if we get through all that in an hour, we'll be doing a good job. So with that, uh, let's go to... <coughs> It's catching up. This is, I'm just going to give you kind of a look at downtown, and my father will tell you a story about how North was named. This is in the middle of Main Street and Center, or Shelton. So this is the library in behind. This is, um, you are looking west if you're in the middle of the street on uh, Main Street and Center. This is the old Ambler Hotel, and the Amblers are still a very old family that have been around Northville. This was the old fire department with the bell on top right next to it. Where the Coney Island, some of you probably eat downtown, 
that's sitting right in here to give you a concept of where that is. So that gives you the early look. This is getting pretty modern. You know, a trolley going through town, but notice, still horse and buggies, a new Model T, dirt, dirt in downtown Northville. Uh, again, this is looking down the opposite way. Same intersection, you are looking down towards the Northville Bell plant, or the, the, the workout area, the <laughs> going. I have to remember because it's about, about eight things and everything. Um, this is looking east from uh, Center Street and Main Street. Um, Genetti's would be here on your right side, if that gives you an idea. And this gives you a little earlier before that. No cars yet, all dirt, all buggies. With that, my father's going to talk about how Northville is named and about surveying. You want to know that? <laughs> <laughs> my father's 100%. He just can't hear quite as well. He can't get around. He, he has a better memory than I. But talking about Northville, how it was named, and surveying in the area. You want to know about that now? Yes. I don't know if Plymouth was there, but every little town was built because there was a mill. And the mill was there because they dammed up uh, the, the river. Uh, what we call it, the creek. Hmm. So there's a little town uh, on Five Mile Road that came up it called Phoenix. And there's a pond there, and in fact the pond's there now, and there's a, there's a dam, and a, there's an, a mill, and where the mill was, by, uh, the, the mill is there that to grind the corn and, and make flour for, for the farmers. And so wherever there was a mill, by then the little town started to grow. Hmm. So there's, there's Plymouth, and then there was Phoenix on the Five Mile Road uh, in Northville Road. And uh, so then over on Six Mile Road, uh, there's a, a, another mill that was built. So another little town came up and it's called Waterford. Mm -hmm. And so they laid out the little town called Waterford. <clears throat> and he said that uh, they laid everything up except the church. And he said, your, your town will never last because you don't have a church. And sure enough, it didn't last. It didn't fade out. So then uh, a bunch of people started living uh, in this area. And they said, well, uh, what, 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 what is the name of, of that little town, or that little section? And he said, well, uh, there's four towns. Plymouth, Phoenix, Waterford. So this one, it's it's a north village, the north village of the four villages. So then eventually, north village became Northville. And that's the way it wow. is today. Huh. Um, just one other thing. When he had the racetrack in Northville, right after World War II, by North Hill, what, what, what was the town? Um, they had races here. They, North Hill was the first time they had harness races. And they found out if North Hill was a city, they would bring some money from the state of Michigan just because North Hill was called a city. <laughs> what do you think happened? <laughs> The next day was the city. <laughs> and the first amount of money that they received from the state, uh, they built a recreation building. And so, so from then on, Northville received money from the state, and they still do because it was called the city. <laughs> Anything else? I think, I think that's it. We'll get to the next story very shortly. And as he mentioned, Waterford is the Meads Mill area, Meads Mill School, and how it got dammed up, and 
historically, if you look on some records in the state of Michigan, they believe that is one of the greatest mill races, and the water raced from the pond there on Six Mile and Norco Road down to the mill, and it was constructed unbelievably strong. So that, as my father said, was a town that was as big as Northville, but what? Didn't have a church, did it? So need some religion once in a while. And as he mentioned, in Phoenix area, you know, where Phoenix Lake is as you go down the parkway, and we're going to talk about the village shops of Henry Ford in another session, but you can see the different workshops that Henry set up. Norfolk Valve Plant is down where the Planet Fitness is today, down on the corner. That's where Ford made every valve for every engine that they made worldwide at one time. And as you went down the parkway, some built instruments, a lot of suites and what have you in one on Northville Road, this side of Five Mile, and over by Phoenix is another one. We will talk about that, but as my father mentioned, what did every town need? They needed a mill to grind up the corn to get the shaft away from the, the wheat and the seeds and what have you. So each area had its own mill, and we'll look at some of those in the future. So another story that my dad will tell, um, again, the straight man, the color commentary, um, Wall Lake. Wall Lake has a, a very interesting story behind it. It's called Walled Lake because there's a wall all the way around inside the lake that dates back to ancient times. They haven't quite dated it. They found copper arrowheads and other things, so it goes extremely long in the history. Even before the Huron Indians, in this area in southeastern Michigan, there were 10,000 Indians, you know, mostly the Huron tribe and others. But in Wall Lake, they found ancient artifacts in there, so there's a history with the Indians it seemed to be a really nice lake in the area, too. So people went there for their summer homes and the whole bit. And it became a place where they put a dance hall, they put a roller coaster, an amusement park. My father will talk about when Benny Goodman and all the big bands of the 30s and 40s went out there. And he and my mother used to dance on the floating floor uh, out on the lake and the whole bit. So with that, just so you know, Everybody knows where Wall Lake is as you go to uh, Novi, keep going. But some people think, oh, this is kind of a nice community, all these little homes. It's been there an awful long time. And that's where they had a house right after World War II, because that's what they could afford, a little cottage on Wall Lake. So this gives you an idea, and there was a, an inn over there. And this gives you a concept. You're going to tell us all about Wall Lake now. <laughs> I, I think you're very enjoying all of us. So, <laughs> how, how many here that dance at the Wallet Casino? Anybody who dance at the Wallet Casino? One, one dance? Okay. Yeah. You, you dance at the Wallet Casino? You dance at Okay. Did you dance at the Wallet Casino? Yes. Okay. Um, I got a question to ask you. What was in the middle of the dance hall in the, in the middle, middle of the floor? Do you remember that? Okay. It, it was a be beautiful, uh, big, big as a, a bushel basket, all of mirrors. And so as you dance, you would dance like this would revolve in the little mirrors on the floor would be all over the floor. But as Brian said, <clears throat> uh, the Wall A Casino was a beautiful, beautiful dance hall. And uh, one night I was out there, and, and uh, uh, Armstrong with the trumpet, uh, Louis Armstrong was out there, and he was on, on, the, on the stage. And then they had another orchestra up, up in the balcony. So they had what they call the Battle of Bands. So Louis Armstrong, he would play the trumpet, and then he'd take out his handkerchief and remember he <laughs> maybe, maybe you're not old enough to see Louis Armstrong to know who he was, but he, he 
stories with, with half of his anger trying mm -hmm. to wake him up. But anyhow, when Louis Armstrong got done playing his number, then the, the, the orchestra was up in the balcony. They would start to play. And then at 11 o'clock, uh, they would take time off, and, and everybody would go out, uh, uh, and they'd, like Brian said, they'd go on the, the roller coaster, uh, they'd go on the roller skating rink, uh, they had a speedboat that went back and forth across the hall, and they, uh, they just had a, a tremendous amount of amusement out playing out there. Uh, one quick story, uh, there was a boy from Northville, and uh, he, he was out there this one night, and uh, had a, he was a real good-looking boy, and he was on the football team for Northville High School. He, he was a little bit older than I was, a couple of years older than I was. And he had a, a real sharp-looking white suit on. And during the time that they had the, the bands playing, by then they'd always have a good-looking girl, and she, uh, they, they'd have a break. And she sing a song, and everybody would go up and listen to her song. So th this boy from North Hill, with his white suit and a good-looking football player from North Hill High School, uh, he, he went right up in the front row, and, and he was clapping for her and clapping for her. So when she got done singing, why well, uh, she came down, and, he, and also he was a real good dancer. So he said, would you like to dance? And she said, oh, yeah, I'd like to dance with you. So they danced around there. And uh, she said, uh, when, she said, how old are you? <laughs> and he said, I'm 21. <laughs> and she said, well, when, when the band leaves here uh, tomorrow night, I'd like to have you go along with the band. Would you go? Oh, he said, sure, I'll go with you. <laughs> so the band left, and he left. <laughs> he was gone about a week. And uh, his father found out that he, by that time there, he was down in Kentucky. <laughs> and so he contacted him, and he said, is my son down there? And uh, the band leader said, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, uh, He's 21, so he can do what he wants. He said, my son is 17. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, if, if you don't get him back here, he said, you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> Take my 17-year-old son, and uh, he said, I'll, I'll send you, I'll wire you the money, and, and uh, put him on the bus and send him home. <laughs> so, so reluctantly, why he left the girl and he left the van and he came back to Northville. I, I can't tell you his name because some of his family are still here in Northville. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the rest of the story. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about the roller coaster and the speed boats out there on Wall Lake too and all the activities? Yeah. Okay, you did when I was out there. So another area of town that we talked about when I showed a picture of where my father grew up was on Fairbrook, 222 Fairbrook. Today, if you envision, if you had Norfolk Downs on Seven Mile and look towards South Line, that would be west, that was a big pond. That was Ambler's Pond and then eventually Balboa Lake. He's going to tell you a little bit about that. but where he grew up, so if you envision 222 Fairbrook, it used to be a baseball diamond called Diamond One, now it's just a little park. That was all underwater. The Amblers, where we showed you that hotel, they had a little sawmill down by where the fish hatchery is. Mm -hmm. And he used to make uh, something called a separator for grain of partner, I think is the name. And he used to buy those, but then he had a little sawmill, and he made all the pieces, and he dammed up that river, you know, the, the Rouge River there, and made a pond. My father will tell you a little bit about how Henry Ford came to town and made that even better, but my father could walk out the front of his house, go across the street, and put his canoe 
in the pond when he was a kid, so he would tell us about those stories and the whole bit. Again, the house is still there today on 222 Fairbrook. That's how it looks today. If you cross the street, you're looking down on Seven Mile. If you look, it's a big ridge. So fall is coming right now, and winter is. If you come up Seven Mile, you'll be able to see the dirt mounds where the dike was on that. It's hard to see with all the leaves on the trees, but if you come down Seven Mile, past the racetrack going towards South Lyon, look this winter, you'll see the edges of where that pond was on either side, and you'll see the steep incline where my father grew up there. Balboa Lake. Um, the, the, we had this big, beautiful green canoe just over the hill, down onto, onto, the, onto the pond. Uh, we could get in the canoe and paddle all, all the way up to the fish hatchery. And there's a bridge running up to the rural hill cemetery. And that bridge was so high because the, the water was, came up from, from, the, from the pond. So uh, my father and my mother and my sister and myself, uh, we, we would paddle all the way up to the fish hatchery and, and paddle back. And, uh, so one night, uh, it was a real bad storm, and it took the dam right out. Ooh. And it, it flooded everything down to the racetrack. It took a lot of the houses and washed them right on down, down the river. And uh, so <clears throat> Henry Ford uh, came to Northville. In fact, Henry Ford spent a lot of time in Northville. Uh, he had a cousin who lived in Northville, and uh, his name was Mr. Bogart. Mr. Bogart had a grocery store here in Northville. And uh, every year he would give Mr. Bogart a new Ford automobile for free. Uh, he didn't like the dealer in Northville, <laughs> so he told him to go to South Lion. <laughs> At that time, there was a Ford dealer in South Lion. So he'd go to South Lion to get his Ford car. Uh, Henry Ford, hmm, Spend some, spend some time on his honeymoon in Northville, uh, on a house uh, up near Kroger's, where the Kroger grocery store is, right across the street from Kroger's grocery store. So he spent a lot of time in Northville, and he liked Northville very much. Naturally, his cousin was here. So when the dam went out, he said, I'm going to do something for the city of Northville, for the village of Northville. So he said, I'm going to build a new dam for the city, for the town of Northville. So it took, him, took his men all summer long. Uh, to, to build a dam was a big deal to build a dam. But the dam was about 15 foot high and probably about uh, 40 foot across. And uh, they uh, even had the little railroad right, right across from, from where I lived to take all the gravel and, and all the sweat and everything out down to, to where the dam was going to be. So that, then they, they got the, the dam all built, and uh, while they're building, while the water was coming in, into, the, into the dam, in, into the pond, like some, of, some of the workers said, hey, look at those fish in there. And yeah, the place was full of fish. So once they got full of, of water, my uh, workmen came back out there at night uh, with some dynamite. <laughs> and so they, they lifted the dynamite and threw it into, into the water. And during about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, we heard this big boom. <laughs> and so uh, it killed a lot of those fish. And the fish came to the service, and they had a whole bushel basket full of fish. And that's what they That's why they had the dynamite there to kill the fish. Well, I was, that was okay, but the trouble was, it made a, a little crack 
And it was Daniel. <laughs> and every, every year, that little crack started getting bigger and bigger. And after three years, the lot, the, the lot went back out of again. And so, the, so uh, Henry Ford said, hey, I, 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 I built the dam, but I'm not, I'm not damn, I'm going to build another one. But all I had up there, it was, it was just beautiful because it was kind of like lover's lane. Uh, people would park their car uh, and right out in front of, of our house, and then they'd walk down to, to, to the dike, and they'd walk on the dike all the way out to the dam, and then there was a bench out there, and then they, they would sit on the bench and look at the stars and hold hands. I guess that's all they do is hold hands. <laughs> so, anyhow, so they did that for three years, and they called it Bel Belboa Lake, and it was just beautiful. But uh, once the lake went out, like right now it's just part of Heinz Parkway Drive. So you buy there now and it's all just trees and bushes and everything else. But that's that's where the Belvoir Lake was. <laughs> I think that's pretty much all Brian. And as my father said, Henry Ford had a strong affiliation for Northville. He even brought Thomas Edison and Mr. Firestone out to see the valve plant. And back in the old Norfolk Record archives. There's some of that, those pictures back then, because they were all great friends. In fact, Henry Ford's son, Edsel, the first, married a Firestone, and that's why the Firestone Farm is at Greenfield Village down there. So he really liked it out here. He spent recreational time. If you go down the Historical Society, they have an area where the, he took the trolley out here where Henry Ford sat and hold it, even though he could drive any car he drove. He drove the trolleys out here sometimes, too. So there's a lot of history down at the Historical Society. They talk about Henry Ford. In another session, we don't have time tonight, but in one of these future sessions, we're going to talk about the village industries that Henry Ford set up. But he spent a great deal of time out here and liked North Bloom quite a bit. In general, to give you an idea of town, there were some people that thought North was a very nice place to be. So some industrialists came out on the outskirts of North. I'm going to let you know some of these homes that you probably know today. This is the old Chase home. You hear, you know, the Chase subdivision. That's on Griswold and 8 Mile today, a beautiful piece of property. There was a beautiful home there before, and they put Spanish moss in for the insulation, and it got so hot one night, it caught fire. So they imported it all from down south. They rebuilt the, the mansion in that book. My parents were friends with the Chases, and they were young, and the Chases were older, you know, 75 years ago or so. Um, today, the house looks pretty similar. It's been redone. Uh, the last person that lived in there was the Cadillac dealership. Don Massey bought that, and there's a whole story about how he was looking for a store or looking for a house, and he was at a bar downtown Norfolk, and a young lady had just got that real estate listing that day, but that's the rest of the story, and he ended up buying the house and made her a whole year. Um, I think one of his nurses inherited the house. So it's right now just about ready to close if it hasn't closed. So Don Massey has since passed away. But that is one of the houses in Norfolk. Another house, if you envision, we're going to talk about different families in the future, but as we're talking on houses, the Rogers. The Rogers family came up with condensed milk. And their first little plant was at the end of Rogers Street, down there by Seven Mile by Eaton Drive. They were very successful. They uh, canned, no pun intended, condensed milk for the first time. They then eventually put a plant over by where the cider mill is, and with some of the money from the condensed milk, he built a beautiful house, Novi Road and Nine Mile. Shiro's, you know where that restaurant is? That's the old Rogers Mansion. A little bit. So that was condensed milk in town. Um, so there was people at the very beginning 
talking about, you know, Norfolk, what a nice, what a nice place it was. Some millionaires early on. My father will talk about some of these folks in the future, but just to give you an idea, this is a big mansion on top of the hill by the swim club, by where Hillside is, um, Buckner Hill, which was a convalescent center or East Lawn Sanitarium. When I was a kid, it was still there that way, and there were people in there. So you would walk up a path, which is now a street, which is condos and houses, but that was the mansion here, and then they added on to be a sanitarium. It was a beautiful location. That is the highest point in Wayne County. So that on top of Hillside, you can see Detroit, literally on a clear day. When I was a kid, we would go up there and look. Two of the high points in Northville, right on top of the, the hill there, where the big water towers, you know where it says Northville? That is the highest point in the county, about 1,000 feet above sea level, uh, about. Uh, Detroit drops down to about 500 feet. The second highest point is out by um, the psychiatric hospital, which is just sitting there on Seven Mile, across from Rockies. On a clear day, no, no question on top of that tower, the water tower, or on top of the top floor out there, you could see Detroit. So just to give you an idea, Norfolk is kind of known as the Switzerland of uh, Wayne County. When you think about it, Wayne County is pretty flat. All the hills are here, and because when the glaciers came through 12,000, 15,000 years ago, they stopped here ever so slightly and carved out the area. Why do we have gravel pits? Because they stopped here for a while. Moraine School is on one side. That's the moraine or the border of where all the gravel is. You know, in some areas in the state and other areas around the country where the glaciers came through and stopped for a while and it warmed up, all that gravel and sand would drop. Northville was a huge gravel pit area. Um, when I was a kid, we used to swim where Blue Heron Point is. That was a gravel pit until they hit the water. Then it filled up. Now they're beautiful lake homes, right? So back then, it was just a place to go swimming. Highland Lakes, that was another gravel pit. Um, one of the original gravel pits were on the end of Katy Street, and Rogers Street, where Mr. Turnbull, my father, lives. That's where they got a lot of the original gravel, and they made bricks. They deposited clay in another area on Rogers Street and Seven Mile. They used to make bricks down there. But just to give you a, a vision, people, I talked to Mr. Thompson, who bought the old Starkweather house on Seven Mile, on the other side of Beckworth Stonewater subdivision is today. That was a huge farm that ran from seven mile all the way to six mile. And his father looked at all the archives and looked at everything from geology and knew this was a great area for a gravel pit. He bought the old Starkweather place. And if you look down, if you go in where Stonewater is, there's a big pond. That's where they hit the, the groundwater. That was a huge gravel pit area when I was a kid also. And we're gonna talk more about that in the Underground Railroad in future sessions. That was a stop on that. So just to give you an idea, different homes around Northville uh, that they, they border. The last thing, because of that topography, you know how I know it doesn't look like we have these big hills, but again, we have the largest hills in the county here. So what do they do on top of those hills? Let's go skiing. Let's do a ski jump hill. And with that, we're going to hear about the ski jump hill. Um, we weren't going to ski jump hill so much tonight. The third night, I, uh, we're going to go into quite detail because uh, when I was a little boy, a little boy, I, I attended the ski jump hill uh, in 1923. Northville was the ski jump capital of Michigan. <laughs> so with that, we won't go into it anymore, but it's, it's, we got a lot of other things to carry on. But I think we'll let that one go, Brian, until the third week. I think you can talk a little bit about it, but just to give you an idea, this is where you're looking. 
you're on top of a hill, he is going to land down by the Good Time Party Store, Norfolk Road and Seven Mile. So that hill is there today, and they built between a 50 and 75 foot ramp on top of that hill. But you can tell a little bit about that story. We have time tonight, Mr. Turnbull. <laughs> Good. We're good. They're going to come on there and say that the library is closing now. Would you like? Would you like them to tell that story? We have a lot. They want to tell. They want to hear that story just a little bit more. About your ice skating. Okay. I'm going to think about this for a minute. In 1923, they, they thought they had a ski jump hill, and, a ski jump, and they built a tower here. And uh, I'm trying to think of the, of the three, of the six boys. Oh. Who's the, who's the six boy? Henry. Henry. Skip that one, Brian. I haven't okay. got my mind on the on this. Side. I threw him a curveball. <laughs> So another story, and looking at Northville, I just want to give the vision to you, where are we looking here? So this is from bricks today would be sitting right here. You are in the road looking east, and my father will talk about what this structure is in the middle of the road. This is the original Northville electric shop on the cover of the latest History of Northville book, and he'll tell you why it moved down the street and the whole bit, but that gives you a, a vision. Again, you're outside City Hall's a little bit farther right here, but if you came out of the library towards Main Street, you're looking right down uh, Main Street, Main Street that way. If that, this is Plymouth, that is Nova. To, to give you a vision of what it looked like. And you might want to tell them about the crow's nest, if that's okay with you. You want to bring in the villain for starting that now? Yes. In 1930, my, um, on the radio, they came on and he said, everybody lock their doors tonight. Because Dillinger, maybe you're not old enough to know who Dillinger was. Right? <laughs> anyway, anybody know about Dillinger? Yeah. He was a gangster in Chicago. Uh, he was going to come into Detroit to have a battle with, with the, the gangsters in Detroit. So what they did, they, uh, they, they said, told them, everybody lock their doors. So uh, we, we, we all locked our doors that night. And my God, Dillinger did come into the Northville that night. And Mr. Ware, uh, down in the building right now, is called Baby Baby. Mm -hmm. that, that was the building that he just got done building. He says, we're building 1929, right up on top of the, of the building. So if you're down there any time, I look up on the, the, the top of Baby Baby, and you'll see we're building 1929. So Mr. Uh, Dillinger uh, came into Northville. He cut a big hole about four foot square in the back door and came in and stole all of his guns and all of his ammunition. And he just, uh, just opened up his new hardware store. And so uh, he, he bought the guns on assignment. And when he sold them, that he would pay for them. Well, he didn't have any guns because Dillinger had come in and stole them all. So he went bankrupt. And so the uh, bank took over the building and uh, they contacted my father, who was uh, up on East Main, uh, West Main Street, 
and said, would you like to come down and, and move into, into the new building? And my father said, oh, I'd love to. This was in 1930. And he said, I don't have any money because the, the depression was still on. And then he said, well, come in and, and pay rent whatever you can pay. So my father did, and uh, we stayed there. My father moved down there, and we stayed there until 1966. Oh, wow. And then we finally sold it to Dell, and Dell made the shoe store in there afterwards. But uh, it, it was, when, when we moved in there, the hole was still cut there in the back door, <laughs> and there's just a piece of sheet metal over the top of it. Uh, Ryan was saying about the crow's nest. Right in the middle of Main Street and Center Street, uh, there's this, this uh, steel, uh, what would you call this? Uh, we call it the crow's net, but uh, the band used to have ladders, and they could go up there and, and, and play music. And, and uh, they're up higher in the air, and, uh, so when a politician was wanting to talk, why he, he, he'd go up the ladder and, and get up there, and he, he would talk, and, and everybody could hear him because he was up, and, and thousands of people would get all, all around the ground of the crow's nest. But what happened to the crow's nest? There's a streetcar. The streetcar used to come up at Main Street and, and stop right by the crow's nest. Well, the gal darn kids greased the street, greased the tracks from, from the streetcar at Halloween. So the, the streetcar came up the tracks, put on the brakes. Brakes wouldn't hold them. They went right over and knocked over the crow's nest. <laughs> and uh, Jim Stagnodia says, uh, damn are those the kids. They uh, greased the tracks, and uh, they, they never put the cruise nest back up again. They would just leave there, and after a while, they hauled all of it away. You used to have to drive down uh, Main Street, get up to the cruise nest, and you have to drive around the ground cruise nest. And Mr. Turnbull, were you one of those kids that greased that track? I don't think so. I don't think I was old enough. <laughs> So as my, as my father mentioned earlier, every town had a mill to it. As we mentioned, you needed a mill for your corn and to uh, make sure you uh, separated the, the wheat and ground different things. This was the Northville Mills. So this is where the historical society is today. If you envision the mill pond, that was above this mill. And they would put all the logs and the trees and float them in that mill pond. What is the mill race? That's from the pond, the big pipe that goes from three feet to two to one to maybe six inches to get that velocity to turn the wheel, to turn the saw. So that's the mill race. People say the mill race. So now you know the rest of the story. It was a huge sawmill. This is the place that Henry Ford bought to do the Norfolk Valve plant. So again, that was the center of the town where all, if you were a farmer around here, we're going to talk about the different farms in the future and how people would bring their crops in to be ground. That's a main section of any town. Phoenix Mills, where my father talked about Phoenix Lake on the way to Plymouth, another big mill. That's still there today. Wayne County has a huge building there, and that was part of where the mill was, right uh, on the other side of the, the pond. Uh, so every town had a big mill. We talked about Waterford or Meads Mill. It was, I've read a lot of different things about that was the best race of the water going from the lake on Six Mile and Norfolk Road, all the way down to the mill, the Meads Brothers 
built the big mill. Thus, Meade's Mill, thus the school. If you go up by the school, one street down, you can see all the old homes that was part of that community called Meade's Mill. That was as big a community as Northville was at one time. But as my father mentioned, what was the problem? No religion. <laughs> so that gives you an idea on that. Would you like to talk about the mills at all? I'm not going to talk about something else. I wish you would. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a little background on Northville and what makes Northville so important and so much different than any other town around. North, uh, Michigan became a state in 1837. Uh, Michigan was the 26th state that was created in, in the United States. As soon as Michigan became a state, the federal uh, surveyors came through to the Northville and they started on Lake Huron, well, actually Lake St. Clair, and they went all the way to Lake Michigan with a line, a straight line. You know what they call it? Base line. Base line. Base line. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Right through Northville. Mm -hmm. Remember that, it's on your test. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Base Line came right through Northville. And uh, they, they got to Northville, they couldn't <laughs> up over the hills, so they, they went around the hills and back out to Eight Mile Road. So uh, the surveyors got, got the base line right through Northville. So that's, that's one thing in Northville that is very, very important. But there's not too many towns that has the base line all the way through. But it's a straight line all the way to Lake Michigan. And from that, now this is very important, so remember this one. They laid out all of the counties, all the counties in the state of Michigan from baseline to Toledo to, to, to the upper, to, up to the bridge. Excuse me. So every, every township is laid out uh, from the baseline right through north of Okay, that, that was one thing very important. <clears throat> On my abstract at my house, <clears throat> it says right on it, Village of Northville, Township of Plymouth. <clears throat> and uh, so at one time, Northville and Plymouth were all one township. <clears throat> in 1855, why they had a big powwow between Northville and Plymouth. Uh, Plymouth said, hey, we want our township in Plymouth. Northville said, hey, no way. We want the township building in Northville. So they said, well, I will tell you what we're going to do. We're going to split the township up. We're going to put a half a township for Northville half a township for Plymouth. And that's the way it is today. Plymouth built their township hall where they wanted to, and Northville built their township hall where they wanted to. So that's another thing that's different. Uh, there's how, how many townships in the state of Michigan is only a half a township <laughs> instead of a full township? <laughs> the, the third thing that's different from Northville after World War II, why, uh, there, uh, there's a house built on every lot in Northville. And, and a lot of the boys came home from the service, and uh, they wanted to move into Northville, and there's no place to, bit to build. So hmm, Northville said to nobody, hey, um, how about letting us extend our, our property, uh, Northville probably only went up to 8 Mile Road, down, down by the cider mill. Uh, how about if we extend 
up, up to eight and a half mile road. And so, so uh, people can build their homes up, up there, in, we, we can call it Northville. Well, uh, Novi is, is a big township that goes all the way out to Wall Lake. So they said, sure. Uh, so they had a vote and they did it legally and up to Lansing. And so Northville moved into Oakland County. So that's another thing. How many towns are in two different counties, Wayne County and Oakland County? Later on, uh, out on Beck Road, an eight mile road, where north of the states are, why, uh, they said, hey, we, 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 we need some more property. So they said, to Novi, how, how, how about uh, Swarm, take some more of your property in Novi. He said, you're going to have all you want. <laughs> so we went all the way from Eight Mile Road to Nine Mile Road, up, up where the north of the states is right now. So we moved into more in Oakland County. This is kind of unusual. If you go on the north side of Eight Mile Road, it's the city of North Hill. If you go on the south side of Eight Mile Road, it's North Hill Township. As soon as, as soon as you get back past Tap Road. So that's the three things that's different in North Hill. Baseline, uh, half a township, and then two and three different counties, two different counties. Remember that, it's on your text. <laughs> <laughs> and just to extend that knowledge, again, we have a lot of dates that are rolling around and this year is the 150th anniversary of being um, village but if you go back it's 1827 that this was a community around here and as my father said Plymouth was the big township Plymouth and North it was all whatever six uh, square miles 36 square miles around there we were split off the North Village as he told you the story on that, and Mr. Dunlap, that was his farm downtown, and his house is still there on Dunlap and Center Street, or Sheldon, the, v the hall, is that, not the VFW hall, the American Legion. Legion, the American Legion, they turned the house 90 degrees on that, so that is his original house, and they, he subdivided, he owned everything this side of Katy, and he subdivided Northville. Plymouth, subdivided their area, so I understand a little earlier in the 1830s, then North was subdivided it. Plymouth became a village, let's see, first as a community, they had their meeting out in North Territorial, and there's a meeting out by the Starkweather House in Northville, so Plymouth beat us to be a village area. Let's see. But, Northville in 1867, get this right, a community, a village, 1867, Northville beat them by four days to be an official village. So Northville is four days older as a village than Plymouth. I believe the most important thing coming up, Northville will have its bicentennial in 2027 as a community coming up. Here. I think that's a pretty important date for all of us because that's kind of as you come into North, but what do you see on the signs since 1827? So we have a lot of different dates, but and as you look at the naming, Plymouth was named after you know the Mayflower coming over into Plymouth that was voted on, and Plymouth was the name of the town. And there's minute meeting notices, you know, in the old papers. Northville, as my father said. Some people want to call it Dunlapville because Mr. Dunlap, you know, came up. He goes, that's not a very good name. It's the North Village. Novi, there's a lot of folklore around Novi. And was it the number six stop on the stagecoach, you know, as they went by? Because every 10 miles, there's a town where they, you know, got new horses between Detroit and Grand Rapids. But it was named before those stagecoaches went by there. So it's a really good folklore. I was told, and I've read a lot of things, 
it was voted on. There was three or four different names, and they voted on Novi. They wanted a short name. They were part of Farmington, Farmington Hills area. They wanted a short name, and Novi was voted on back then. Mr. Turnbull. I, I just went in the files, and I found out about the steam dump bill. Good. <laughs> in, in 1923, well, it was about 21 to 23 is when, mm. when the ski jump hill was here in Northville. But the Hall brothers yeah, were the right. ones that uh, built the ski jump hill. And then the Hall brothers were all good ski jumpers. Uh, as I remember, they, they, they would mm, they would jump off the tower, and uh, they would jump between 135 to 165 feet uh, off the tower. And for years, you'd go up on top of the hill and still see the concrete of where the tower was, the four sections where the tower was. They'd have to take their skis and go up there and, and like a ladder. They'd have to take their skis and rub the ladder with their skis. And once they got up there, then they would come down. And uh, they used to charge a dollar to go down, a, car, a dollar a car. And but, so you, you had to be inside the car. You couldn't be on the running board. <laughs> and I, I remember going down there. I was, just a, 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 I, I was born in 1919, so I, I'd only be four years old. But uh, I, mean, I think I remember this, but uh, I, I was the third one in the back seat. We, we'd have th three cheers. And so in, in, the, in the old Model T, everybody had to be inside of the car. If they put it on the running board, you could have 10 people on there for, for a dollar. So, so everybody would have to be inside the car. So lots of times they'd park the cars down by the North of racetrack and then just walk over to, to the ski jump hill. But it was so popular that the cars on Sunday would be lined up from North Hill all the way down to Farmington Road, bumper to bumper, trying to get into North Hill to watch the ski jump hill. And of course, the restaurants and the gas stations in North were going wild because I had all that business coming in. And all, all the stores opened up on Sunday, and you got all, all that business uh, from the ski jump hill. And, uh, so then later on, they left North Hill and they went up to Brighton. And that's where the Brighton ski jump hill oh, yeah. is right now. And in, in the Hall of Fame, in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, uh, there, there's a whole article about the Hall brothers, and, and the Hall brothers, this one Hall brother, set, set a world's record in ski jumping, and, and it, it was out in, in uh, uh, I think it was in the state here. He set a world record. Ski jumping, I was trying to think. He set a world's record, and I, I think he jumped uh, like 365 feet, and he was a world champion for, for the whole world in ski jumping. You know. And uh, anyhow, and you, you go to the up at Ishpeming, Michigan, right? and you get out there in, in the Hall of Fame, and uh, you, know, you read all about the Hall Brothers. It's a world champion uh, of ski jump hill. And, 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 you know, so, uh, and I'm told that one time they had the pre qualifying for the Olympics on this hill uh, an awful long time ago. So, to, so, just to give you again a flair, a lot of things going on in Little Norfolk. In the downtown, why do we all like Norfolk? I, I encourage you to get involved in the whole bit. Because it's been the same town since the 1860s or 70s, you know. Colorado. 
Colorado. Thank God. Got it. So from that standpoint, we have gone to about our time. I encourage you to talk to Wendy if you want more information on Northville. Again, the library is a great resource. It has a huge room. There's stories like we've talked about tonight that my father and other of uh, the North historians and uh, the people that have been around 100 years have put stories on tape. If you're interested in that, great. If you want to walk around the Historical Society and the Mill Race Village, it's a great place just to learn about the town. There is a little uh, alley downtown in between the parking lot and the Main Street with all the historic pictures. The North Electric Shop is on there and they talk about that. And my other grandfather's barber shop with a little bowling alley in front is on there too. So just look at the books. There's walking tours around Northville. I encourage you to get out and take a look. We have four sessions in the future and we'll talk about other things. But things for next week will be the lumbering area, the lumbering industry around Northville, the early roads. What were they all about and what were they? Uh, the different sports parks. There's been different sports parks around Northville and a lot of history about that. And we'll talk a little bit about the Underground Railroad, how Northville was part of that. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention tonight, but we have more stories. I got something else to talk about. I bet you do. I got three things to talk about. I got three things. Yep. All right. Um, talking about the ski jump hill, well, I lived on 222 Fairbrook, and, and one night, they really had a big ice storm, and I was about uh, 12 years of age, and uh, everything was ice, no snow, just ice, so I thought, hey, there's no school, there's so much ice. So I put on my ice skates, and I skated right down the street. And I thought, well, I'll skate up to the ski jump hill. <laughs> so I went up Center Street, and the ski jump hill was on the left-hand side uh, of, of, of Selwyn. So I thought, well, the ski jump hill is on the east side. I'll, I'll go up on the west side of the ski jump hill. In fact, the hill is still there, and people still use it in, in, in the winter time. You see the cars lined up, they go up and down the hill. So I got on my skates, and I went up there, all the way up the hill. When I got up to the top of the hill, I thought, oh my God, what am I doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta come down, and uh, it, it's bumpy, <laughs> and there's no snow. Just solid ice. And I thought, geez, if I ever fall, I'll kill myself. I thought, well, I can't stay up here all the while. So I got on my skates and I hooched down, and down I came, and the tears were just running out of my eyes. I was going so fast, and I made it without falling. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's one story. The other story is, uh, Mr. Heatley showed the picture where he had the first mass in, in Northville, had three daughters. One daughter's named Rita. And I kind of liked Rita a little bit. Um, there, they had three daughters and a son, and, and I had a, do I had a, a sister and all four of us were in Northville school system at the same time. So I, I went to school with Rita from kindergarten right up through high school. And, uh, I, I played basketball and she played basketball. So right after school, uh, they'd have the girls practice basketball and then, then the boys. And I'd always go over there a little early. <laughs> and, uh, so some of my, my buddies said, hey, uh, you, you, 
you kind of like that Rita, don't you? And I said, oh, she's okay. <laughs> and he said, uh, she's got a nice figure, hasn't she? Oh, I said, I don't know. I, I never know this. <laughs> Not much. That's, that's why I went over there. <laughs> and I said, okay, the third thing. <laughs> This is a little poem, and then I'll, then I'll sign up. Okay, here it goes. They strolled the lanes together. The sky was full of stars. They met at the gate together. And he, he went out and lifted up the bar. She brought her brown eyes up to him. There was nothing in between them now. But he, he was just the hired man. And you know what she was? She was the Jersey cow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your attention tonight. Again, we thank Wendy for putting this all together. If you have any questions, we will start the next session and answer all the questions. She has different cards. You can write them down. You can tell her. You can talk to her on the phone. But we will try to start the next session and answer all the questions that you had. So hopefully we left you with a little bit more knowledge about Norfolk tonight, and we'll get into it in a week from now. Thank you very much for your time.
you know the Brady apartment, sir? On Brady Street? Probably. Brady is just this way you can miss them having them. They're still there. There's two buildings. Yeah, right here. You too.